Welcome back to week five of the Stitch Journal and I'm going to be introducing two new stitches, chain stitch and stem stitch and combined with what we've learned before um, they're going to start week five off and I was inspired by bracket fungus and all the beautiful colours and the beautiful shapes of it and so the whole of this page over the next four weeks we'll be bringing these bracket fungus into stitchy life. I hope you enjoy it. Before I totally get into it, just got a couple of things that I was really wanting to show you before I actually start off into that. On Friday, my sister Wendy turned up and said we were going out for the day. I said, I've got too much to do. No, we're going out. You haven't been out for ages. You need a break. You need to, you know, have a happy day. And so off we went to the beach. And as you can see, we had a really good time beach combing some stuff. So we picked up all these glass pebbles, um, which are really beautiful. I do have a huge collection of glass stones. But then if you've watched my channel, you'll know that I do love holy stones. And so I've, and they, somebody told me they're called hag stones. So I have um, four holy stones that I picked up. That's a really nice one. They're all the way through. That's a lovely one. That one is a good one. This one, I think, is fossilised coral. And that's got one. I don't know whether you can see it, but it's through there. And it goes all the way through. But I'm sure that this is a bit of fossilised coral. Of course, it just could be a bit of rock. I'm not that um, knowledgeable, really. The nicest holy stone, though. Is this little heart shaped one, which is so pretty. It's got a hole right through the middle. And a lovely little dint there and it's sort of like a reddish colour. And I really like that. So that was my holy stones. I picked up some metal and these might find their way into some of my stitching. The aluminium, they're so smooth and beautiful. I feel as if there's something I can do with them. That's a particularly lovely one. This lovely washer has been smoothed by the sea. That's really lovely. And then this, I just maybe it could just be a ring pull or something, I don't know. But it's so smooth because it's been washed by the sea and the gravel. And um, it doesn't actually bend out. Maybe I could. So I don't know what they're going to make. I got driftwood. Some beautifully, that, that, that could be a ship's mast. That's just a lovely bit. In fact, that might hang one of my stitchings off. So I could just see something like this being hung off there to display it. So I think that would be nice. This is going in the book, but I could do another one specially because that just looks like it needs to be a hanger for a piece of stitchery, that one. This is just, well, just the, the patterns and the colours are very inspiring to me. I just love all that mottled blackness and they're so smooth. And then there was, can you believe, fabric. Just really nice worn out fabric that came back home with me. This, which is going to find its way into some sort of embroidery, but it's very tough and very, I don't know, I feel as if it's been a belt or something. Could have been, remember the North East was very industrial. So we sometimes get things from the old pits washed up. And that feels like it could have been from that. But my dad was a miner, so if it is from the pit, that's that's okay for me to use. But then my best finds. Oh, look at these. Two beautiful pieces of rusty metal that are just big enough for me. So I'll move this. Sorry, I should be stitching now, but really. I just, I just thought you'd like to see them. So the first one, how gorgeous is that? It's just the colours, I'm going to zoom you in. The colours are beautiful. The shape of it's beautiful. I just feel as if I want to paint my walls this, like this now. That just gorgeous orangey, reddish, and all this. I just, I feel as if that's definitely going to find its way onto some stitching and then just beside it 
there was this bit too and this is paler on the inside and quite dark on this side it doesn't bend but again I feel just makes me want to stitch something in that colour so that's definitely my favourite that one that is just it just feels very inspiring to me that one so that is my beach finds and I'm about to start doing some sewing and I was watching Catherine on K3N and I think we must have uh, telepathy or something because as she was showing you her rust dyeing and tea dyeing what had I got out to stitch with this week? I had some rust dyed um, sheeting that I did in the summer last year and so this is finding its way into today's stitching uh, not just that, uh, some solar dyed fabric but if you don't have this type of thing of course you can always follow Catherine's tutorial and get yourself some lovely uh, rust dyed tea dyed fabric but you may have some other lovely fabric or you may have some plain fabric you want to paint with some ink tents or some acrylic paints but I'm going to be incorporating some of this into my stitching today that was rust dyed and then it's been over dyed with tea you can still see some rusty bits here um, and these are just all old sheet there's nothing special about these other than they were just bits of sheet that's been solar dyed I don't think it worked very well but that, that's a nice bit that's a nice bit there so I'm going to put these to one side, I'm going to get my page, I'm going to put my beach combing things away and set up for stitching at long last. Oh, what else did I find? Look, I forgot that. Fancy finding thread on the beach. That's just thread intertwined with a lovely bit of fishing net. But the fishing net actually has metal on it. There. The, the fishing line has rusty bits of Maybe it's the leftovers of weights or something, I don't know. But that's definitely got to find its way into some stitching. Maybe I should do a beach themed stitching. Look, that's already nice. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I was just too excited not to show you it because Wendy was right. I needed to go out for the day. And um, it was lovely to come back with a bit of a beach combing haul. So here I am with my page. I thought it would be nice to do something a little bit more arty, a little bit more designed. Plus, I've been wanting to embroider some fungus for ages. And so I've just printed these images off the internet. And this is a bracket fungus called Turkey Tail. And it is so pretty. The printer hasn't shown the colours up quite as nicely as they are. They're very bright. This is a lovely bright ochre yellow. These are rusty, sometimes red. It has cream, white, black, chocolate colour bands. They're really lovely and I love the frilly edge on them. This is a top-down view of it. You can see it's glistening a bit here. So the scope for silvery threads or even some beadwork possibly uh, it's up to you how you want to take it so on my page i am going to just draw with my disappearing pen a really lovely wavy fungi looking line and then some others underneath like that and i'm going to cover this whole page in the end i think I'm going to do the whole page over about four weeks, introducing some new stitches as we go, but also building on what's already been done. I'll get myself, I'll get some strips ripped up and put some thread in my needle. I've actually found this among my thread box. It's a bit of soft cotton, but it's actually been um, plied with a tiny little bit of a I'm not sure if you'd say sparkly, but there's definitely a little glint. I thought that would be a nice thing to start. So I'm going to show you chain stitch and there are two ways of doing chain stitch. It can make all different effects dependent on how you do it. And there are two different ways of accomplishing the exact same stitch. So I've come up with my knot on the other side and I'm just going to chain stitch along this wavy line really. 
I'm going to go down into my fabric almost in the same spot and take a little bite of fabric now I'm going to take maybe about a quarter of an inch which is maybe five mils but it doesn't matter you can make them little or a bigger I'm going to make them a decent size because I'm trying to cover quite a bit of cloth here and the working yarn working thread sorry goes around the back of your needle just as if you were making a blanket stitch really but because you've come back to the beginning when you pull through you're going to have a lovely little loop so your second stitch goes straight back down inside the loop and you can aim to take the same size stitch or you can vary it because we're not talking about precision embroidery here we're talking about having a nice time and just making something that's going to look a bit organic really if you keep thinking that I'm being inspired by bracket fungus and so I'm going to walk along this wavy line taking those same little quarter inch bites pulling it through and not pulling too tight if you find if you pull your thread upwards you might find that you pull your loop too small and then as you try and get along you'll be gathering your fabric up so don't pull your thread straight up in the air I'll just loosen that off again so you can see as you're pulling it pull your thread in the direction that you're traveling in and you'll find that you won't gather up your fabric and when you're making a bigger one it sometimes can be that your little chains end up very narrow and almost like a line instead of being able to see the chains and if that's happening because you're taking a bigger stitch instead of going exactly down where you've come up here just take it a millimeter to the one side and you'll open that stitch up and make a proper loop so i just put my i put my finger on top of there as i pull through and that helps to stop the thread getting caught up and as I pull forward I'm pulling this thread in the direction of the chain stitch and as soon as I've got a loop I stop pulling back into my chain I angle it because I'm following this wavy line quarter of inch and put my finger on and it helps the thread stay nice and smooth as you're pulling through so round the back now if you're right handed you'll be looping your thread the opposite way around I would imagine so you'd be just you'd be holding it the other way around and looping that way but actually it doesn't matter you can loop it whichever way it seems to work for you and well, I'm going to work this this next four weeks page all of these little bracket fungi pieces all at the same time and so the page comes together all at once rather than just working down the page or something and plus that'll keep all of the different elements of the embroidery even and stay within my page marking and to secure this at the end it's just exactly like we would secure a blanket stitch I've actually got a loop so I'm just going to go straight down on the outside of the loop and then that catches that that little end chain and there's the first piece on I've got quite a bit of th uh, thread here I don't want to cut that off and waste it so I'm just going to come back along here and this time I'm going to I'm going to go into the chain I'm just going to do some blanket stitch back along and just going to start getting some stripes going well that little chain is going to take two stitches from me and I don't have to be measuring them or anything I'm just going to put a stitch in wherever I think I'm just going to carry on and just use this bit of thread up and I don't necessarily need this line to go all the way back along so as I'm coming to this curve here because I've got a curve and I haven't got much left I'm just going to get narrower and narrower until this line is just going to curve in together and here I am I've hardly got any thread left just going to pull in under there 
and finish that thread off. I'm going to take the same thread again and do another one of these and I'm going to show you how to do the chain stitch the other way round which is still chain stitch but it's sort of doing it a bit backwards and some people find it easier to do. You can practice them both and see which you prefer. I'm starting at the opposite end entirely and I'm just going to start by making the same chain stitch as I made before and I'll take it down and come up behind about a quarter of an inch behind and now I'm set up to do the whole chain stitch backwards so this time I'm just going to put that needle underneath the two legs of the chain pull it through and then I can go down here where this one started and come back a quarter of an inch and you can see I've got the same chain stitch I'm just doing it the other way around so I go under the two legs just not through the cloth at all and this saves looping the thread around your needle you loop it directly under the previous stitch back down in the same place as you came up and come back a quarter of an inch whichever way it doesn't really matter if you're doing right handed you'll be probably coming through that way but for me it's that way don't pull it too tight and then back down at the, where the start was and jump back however big you want the next chain stitch to be and that makes it's an indistinguishable chain from that but you might find it easier to make it that way now if if you you don't want to embroider some fungi um, use your stitches to make whatever you do want to use maybe you want to do some flowers or something like that but I really like fungi and the, these bracket fungus these turkey tail bracket fungus they are so pretty I still haven't started my mushroom lampshade yet I've got my um workroom in a big mess again because my next door neighbour offered me an old chest of drawers and my modern one which was a very cheap one uh, had a broken drawer and so I just said yes please that's lovely but of course I've had everything out of the cupboard uh, everything out of the drawers and so it's all over. What you can't see is this bit of that I'm filming at is the only bit of my work table that's actually clear enough to stitch at. I'm going to go down and just weave that little tail through. This is the candle wicking thread. It's very similar to Sashiko though. And I'm going to do another line. And this time I'm going to do some whipped running stitch. And I'm just going to take sort of decent little stitches actually make sure they're not getting pulled too tight and I'm going to come back and do that same running stitch again and I'm going to go once more back over I'm keeping these lines quite close together because uh, two of them anyway maybe three but two of them definitely are going to get whipped so I don't want them too spread out There's a good dark one. So it's just um, stranded brown cotton. I'm going to use all six in my needle though. And I'll come up at the beginning on my first line of running stitch and I'm going to whip this this whole line through. Oh look at that already, that's beautiful. So we're done in a thicker thread. So you might have um, a fine ribbon that you could whip through or some knitting wool 
would whip through here really nicely. In fact, I could have found some cruel wool, but I've got the thread now, so I'll, I'll use the wool the next time. But look how beautiful that effect is. That's gorgeous. Just make sure you're not pulling tight at all. I am going to go down there on the top of my page and I did think that I was going to miss this miss the middle running stitch and whip the last one so I shall carry on like that and I can always come back and do the middle if I feel it wants it so I'm going to I'm going to whip this third line of running stitch and just come back the same way Just turn my fabric round. These bracket fungus are almost crying out to be stitched because the stripes just, you can just think of all different things you can do. That stripey pattern. Now I just need to think, do I want that other stripe in? And do you know what I think I do? So I'm going to whip that middle line anyway. Oh, I think that's lovely. Okay, I'll finish my brown thread off. Actually, I'm going to come back to you when I've just done these pieces. I made a little mistake there. I forgot, I forgot that I'm actually following the outside curve upwards rather than the curve of the fungus before. So that's... You think about what I'm following at the moment is each plate is coming down and around and then the underneath one and the underneath one. So this one here is coming here and then that one's sort of coming around and this one's going to be on top. So I shall just embroider over that as I come with fabric. Now I'm going to apply some of my rusty fabric and... So say if you don't have rusty fabric, maybe you've got some sheet you can paint. Maybe you've got some other fabric that you feel will be the right size. And of course, you don't have to be doing the, the correct colours for the fungus. You could absolutely be doing this in pinks and purples and just having fantasy mushrooms or just enjoying the way the stitching is going without necessarily having to do mushrooms or fungi or anything. It's just a it's just a way of practicing the stitch. So I'm going to apply this fabric because I think that'll make good texture. And what I have got here is a charcoal grey in my needle. I've got three strands, so it's just charcoal grey stranded cotton. And what I'd like to do is apply this fabric, but I want to get the wrinkles in it which look like the growth of the fungus itself. And I'm going to running stitch along this. So I am definitely applying it to the fabric and I'm couching it down, but I'm not going to couch it in the, with the same little couching stitches as before. And I'm not going to couch it with blanket stitch either. I'm going to do it with a running stitch. But as I go, I'm going to start creasing it up so that I get a sort of a texture in it. I'm going to stitch down through that crease and make a little running stitch forward. And maybe take another couple of little stitches and do that again. Maybe I'll just crease it the other way this time. I don't necessarily want it to be in a straight line or anything. Hold that crease down. Take another little stitch. I'm not trying to be in the middle of the bit of fabric. In fact, I can twist it as well. I can twist the fabric over. And then that means that the fray is being shown off here. So I'll hold that I'll hold that twist down. I'm just manipulating it with my thumb any which way it comes. Do a little bit more there. And 
and in this way I'm going to go right the way across following my wiggly line I'm going to do the same to each little plate that I'm doing but of course you, you can do different colours or you can do whatever you like and you don't have to make them all the same but I, I definitely am because I am aiming to do sort of a stitched artistic representation of what the fungus is. That sounded very posh actually when I said that. A stitched artistic representation. What the heck? Okay, just I'm going to twist that over again. So I like that little bit of rusty bit there. I want to make sure that's visible. And fold it, hold it, stitch it. You can see what a nice effect crumpling that piece of fabric. And that's about, well, it's maybe a centimetre in width or less than half an inch, definitely. That's just what's suiting me, really. I'm going to fold that bit over, I think. Make a little back stitch to hold it in. Move along. I think I really like the way that's creased up, so I'm going to do that on purpose again. I'm going to twist, twist the fabric. Hold it down with a running stitch. Gather it up a bit. Hold that down with a running stitch. Actually, it's my right thumb that's doing all the work at the moment. It's just holding and moving and the needle helps to move things in. Another little gather. Tell you what, I wish I could put that bit of rusty metal on. <laughs> it would be quite nice. I love that rusty little bit of metal. I bet you're all thinking, Marion's absolutely bad picking up rusty bits from the beach. But I couldn't resist it, it was so pretty. And you can see there's not really a wrong or a right way. It is just go with the little bit of fabric or maybe twist over for you or look like it needs a gather in it. And just do it. Maybe I'll not cut that bit off. Maybe I'll just come back along a little bit and encourage that little bit of fray to do even more now twist it twist it again and tuck it under that one and it just thickens that little layer up there we go well, i really like the way that's gone on there so i'm going to tear some more up i'm going to do that same layer on these three pieces as well I finished my bits of rust dyed fabric and some of them I've actually um, folded and manipulated a bit more than others because I really like the effect. Uh, well, I think that's going to work in really nicely. But I've redrawn my lines a little bit because I felt that I was getting confused myself just because probably I'm trying to do it and look at the camera at the same time. I'm just going to use a bit of torn white sheet so no colour on, nothing at all. I'm only using a narrow strip because I'm just really placeholdering where I need to stitch. It will be on show, but it won't be. I'm going to cover it up with something else eventually, which will also be white. So I am just, I've got some reddish thread in my needle and it was just out of my tangle. Which is my big tangled up bit of threads. So I've just pulled out a dark one and it ends up being this sort of plum colour. And there's three strands already there, so that's what I'm using. And I'm just going to put this fabric in um, right the way around the front edge of the plates of the bracket fungus. So maybe I'll do this one first because it's going to go over there where I... That's when I realised I was going a bit skew with. And I'm going to go right the way down the middle because I like all these stripy bits here. And I'm going to do the next new stitch. And the next new stitch is stem stitch. 
And stem stitch, as, as it says, is a stitch used when making flower stems for any line really. And it can be a big one, little one, it can do it with thin thread, thick thread. But I'm going to go right down the middle because I'm trying to emulate the stripes of the fungus. The stem stitch sort of takes a step backwards to go forwards. And so I'm going to go along and take a stitch back towards where I started, but just about halfway. I'll pull that through. It makes a really nice line. And then the next stitch, I'm going to go forward that same distance again, so about a quarter of an inch, and come backwards to where the other stitch finished. So that's what I've sort of meant by backwards to go forwards. Back a stitch, but you're leaping forward a stitch at the same time. And the stitch is always like you keep your working thread to the left if you're left handed and keep it to the right if you're right handed and you'll find it easiest to manage the thread. And so another stitch backwards and I go forwards. So I'm going straight at the moment but I would need to manipulate this fabric around this wavy edge so I'm just going to pull it in and I'm going to carry on with my stem stitch. And I'm just going to let that, let that little pleat lie underneath that stitch. I keep having to check that I'm on the camera. I keep end up moving off. So I'm going to just pleat that a little bit. Take my other stitch. I'm going to try and keep all my stitches quite even. I'm going to try and keep them. It doesn't matter if they're not, but I don't think you want stitches that are too huge because they'll be a bit loose and you won't be able to hold your fabric down in quite the same way. So even though the pleats and the gathers might be different, the stitches are going to be constant. I can make really tiny stitches on stem stitch. Oh, it's the sort of stitch I might have done for the stems in my flower book. Um, it's the stitch I would use to make a moth feeler, possibly. Or the bird's legs. Anywhere where you want a nice thin line, you can manipulate the line, just like the running stitch line, into curves. Uh, the, the sharper the curve, the smaller your stitch would need to be. But here, these are quite these are quite shallow curves, so I'm quite happy on the size of stitch that I'm doing. Just going to pleat that fabric up to get round this little curve, and hold it down with the next stitch. And carry on going and in this way I'm going to at least have the edge of my f uh, bracket fungus in because I found that I was getting lost off and maybe this would be the one to start with possibly so I definitely want to feel that these are layered up and that they are actually lying one above another and they're not just flat that's if I can if I can manage that Always coming back to where the previous stitch ended. Anyway, while I'm stitching, I should just say thank you everyone for uh, commenting and liking and subscribing to my videos because at the weekend I ended I went past 10,000 which seems like quite a big 
milestone to me and I was, my daughter was super excited on my behalf. She kept WhatsApping me from Berlin saying, is it there yet? I'm looking, I'm looking. And, and so it was quite a bit of excitement that it went into double figures. That my channel, that is, went into double figures. And I've been thinking for a while that I'd like to do something because um, I did the lovely painted bag for uh, Suzanne who won the thousand subscriber draw and I really enjoyed painting that bag um, and I thought oh I don't, I don't want to do a painted bag yet again I need to do something different so and I've finished all my stitching I'm going to uh, tell you what it is that I'm going to do just put another little pleat in there get around this curve and cut my thread and cut that tail okay so now I can see how the fungi are gonna go so it's filling in all of these so I think um, I actually had another dark bit to do but I think I'll leave that till next week because just to show that it doesn't all have to be all this um, dyed or rusty or solar jars or not everybody has those things and it's lovely if you do it's um i love using my fabrics like that but it may be more accessible if you've got printed cottons or quilting cottons or some clothes old clothes that you've cut up and so I just found this bit of, it's the only bit I've got of this quilting cotton left. And I thought that actually works really well with the colours that I'm doing. So I've, I've actually ripped a piece off. And I'm going to use that to make the dark areas. And so some nice printed cotton like that would, would work well. As instead of this even. Just anything that's going to give you the right look well I've finished for this week I think I was actually going to put another fabric and another stitch on but I think that's enough um, I'm going to keep this till next time so I did alter the way that I'd drawn my lines in the end because I realized I was following the outside line instead of each little plate and so by putting the white edge in with this red stem stitch I've defined the very outsides, the outsides of each bracket, like that. And then the colours are going to go upwards from there. I think it's going to look pretty. So I'm going to carry on using rusty colours, reds, yellows, browns and blacks and white. So that's um, chain stitch stem stitch and some more whipped running stitch and so another another couple of stitches next week well I nearly got carried away and just kept on stitching because once I started I just wanted to keep going but I'll leave it there for now and for next week I'll be adding some of that lovely printed fabric to bring out some of the darks in the in the bracket fungus I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I'm having a bit of a change around in my workroom because you might see that this, this is different from normal in my workroom. My next door neighbour was going to chop it up and I saved it. <laughs> and now it's in my room and it's going to store my fabric. But it's not quite as big as the old one that was a bit broken. And so I've got everything out of all the cupboards and about the only thing that's tidy in this room is the bit that you can see. Everywhere else is a big mess. So I'm having a bit of a change round. What else is going on is that as I've been getting comments about it and as uh, you'll have noticed that my channel went over 10,000 on Sunday and it was very exciting. I mean, you know, when I started my channel, I didn't really understand about the whole YouTube thing. I'm not on Facebook. I wasn't on Instagram. I wasn't on anything. And so it was just sort of a stand and start from zero. And here I am um, with 10,000 people. 10,000 people from all over the world who 
like what I'm doing enough to hit that subscribe button. It's mind boggling really and I'm so grateful to you all and you send me such lovely messages um, I talk to people, I have lovely conversations and I've, I've found other people on YouTube that I never would have known about. I've been um, enjoying watching K3N on her channel and um, I enjoy watching, I've been, I started to watch Arne and Carlos, I didn't know about them beforehand. Um, it's just just all sorts and it's been quite quite an eye opener over the last few months to just see the way that communities start which I had no idea about at all not not a jot I just lived in my own little world which is what Michael used to say all the time he used to say you just live in Marion's world and so um, when I was starting my channel and I needed a name for it um, and he was already, he'd already passed away. So um, it was just the obvious choice for me to call my channel Marion's World. I just knew that whatever, I had to be able to get that, that title somehow. Um, and luckily for me, um, it was available and that's what I called it. So thank you all for tuning into Marion's World and uh, getting me past the 10,000 subscribers, uh, which was wonderful. And I thought, I would do another giveaway because I did that lovely one at a thousand and painted the lovely tote bag for Suzanne who was the winner of the 1000 subscriber draw and my daughter said uh, my daughter Naomi said I should do something special and so as it was creeping up there I was thinking what shall I do shall I do another tote bag shall I do what can I do well I think I've come up with something lovely so um, it's all to do with um, commenting on this video so you need to be commenting on this video and be a subscriber and on all of that sort of normal thing and I'm going to leave this running until oh I, I didn't think of a date wait a minute I have to get my diary and find a date I had to go and find my diary I didn't even know what the date was today um, so I'm going to let it run for two weeks, just before, on the Tuesday before the 14th of the, two weeks is up. So that's the 13th of February, so Tuesday the 13th of February at um, 6 o'clock GMT, which is GMT is what I'm on, so 6pm GMT. On the 13th of February, I will pick the winner of the 10,000 subscriber draw. And the prize that the person will win will be a piece of stitching done by me in, well, within reason, whatever they want. So I was maybe thinking a bird or an animal or a flower or a moth or a butterfly or something like that. Um, they can suggest something. And if I think I can do it, then I'll do it. And so I'll just do something of a similar size to the, to the bird page, which is about eight by six, I think same size as I did my birds and um, I will stitch something specially for them and considering nobody else has anything other than me and well my sister will when I've done her Christmas present which I actually haven't done yet um, that'll be a special prize I think and so if you want to be in with a chance you just need to comment on this video and be a subscriber and that's it so I hope, I hope that's exciting and I was definitely over the moon and I just I just want my channel to go from strength to strength and um, thank you, thank you very much all of you for being here with me and, and liking what I do and being so encouraging because those of you who've been with me right from the start will know that there's been times when I've been almost a bit teary on camera and it was just the way that I was feeling at the time and because Michael's not here and I just that's the only thing I wish is that I wish he could be here to see it so I just thank you again I appreciate every one of you all of you who send the super thanks all of you who send me the comments the one who press the like button who are joining in with the stitch journal and sending me the photos of what they're doing I love all of it and thank you so much.
bye from Marion's World. I look forward to seeing your comments and in a fortnight one of you will win a stitching. Good luck everyone. Bye from Marion's World.